The first vehicle action at the ISS in 2016 took place on February 19th when the Cygnus cargo vehicle, named after famous astronaut Deke Slayton, was unberthed from the Nadir port on Harmony and released, after which it performed a deorbit burn and was destroyed over the Pacific Ocean. On March 2nd, 2016, Soyuz TMA-18M undocked from the Poisk module, moved away from the station, deorbited and landed safely in Kazakhstan, returning the year-long ISS mission crew back to Earth. Two weeks later, on March 18th, Soyuz TMA-20M launched atop a Soyuz FG carrier rocket from Site-15 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome on a fast track to the ISS. Turbo pumps are at flight speed, standing by, lift off. and liftoff. Jeff Williams, Alexei Ovchin, and Oleg Skropochka launching to the International Space Station. The first stage of the Soyuz booster delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust from the four strap-on boosters and the single core engine. The first stage going to be burning liquid fuel for the first two minutes and six seconds into the flight. Less than six hours later, Soyuz TMA-20M docked to the Poisk module without issues. The next week, on March 23, 2016, Orbital ATK launched the Cygnus CRS OA 6 mission, with the SS Rick Husband launching atop an Atlas V 401 from Cape Canaveral Launch Complex No. 41. Despite a small anomaly in the first stage, causing the Centaur second stage to burn over a minute longer than planned, the cargo vehicle made it to orbit. Three days after launch, the SS Rick Husband approached the station, was grabbed by the station's arm, and mated to the nadir port of Unity. The following week, on March 30th, Progress M28M undocked from the aft port of the Svesda and was deorbited the next day. That day, on March 31st, 2016, Progress MS-02 launched atop a Soyuz 2.1A carrier rocket from Site-316 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Progress MS-02 docked with the open aft end of the Svezda module. T -10, 9. On April 8, 2016, Seven. SpaceX launched Six. its eighth resupply Five. mission, Four. and the first after the loss of CRS-6 booster. The Falcon 9 booster lifted off and performed flawlessly. After main engine cutoff, or MECO, the second stage fired its engine and put the Dragon into a good orbit. Meanwhile, the first stage performed a series of burns to land successfully on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You. It was the second landing for SpaceX, and the first on a drone ship.
After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Dragon approached the station, was grabbed by the station's arm, and berthed to the Nadir port on Harmony. The Dragon delivered 3,136 kilograms of supplies, experiments, and hardware. Most notable of the cargo was the station's first expandable module, called the Bigelow Expandable Activity Module, or BEAM. On April 16th, the beam was removed from the trunk of the Dragon and berthed to the aft port of the Tranquility Module. Beam is composed of two metal bulkheads, an aluminum structure, and multiple layers of soft fabric with spacing between the layers, protecting an internal restraint and bladder system. The first attempt at module inflation took place on May 26, 2016. However, it had to be suspended when after two hours of letting air in, there was little expansion but higher than expected air pressure inside the beam. The cause of the failure to expand and unfold may have been caused by fabric layers sticking together because the module was delivered almost a year later than it was expected to. Two days later, the module was successfully expanded over the course of seven hours, and it extended 170 centimeters or 61 inches from its stowed configuration. After the expansion was complete, air tanks aboard beam were opened to equalize air pressure in the module with that of the ISS, and so began its two-year test. On June 6, 2016, astronaut Jeff Williams and cosmonaut Oleg Skripochka opened the hatch to beam and entered to collect an air sample, download expansion data from sensors, and install monitoring equipment. The hatch to beam was resealed on June 8, after three days of tests. On May 11, 2016, the Dragon was unberthed from the Harmony module, moved to its release point, and let go. It moved away from the station, deorbited, landing safely in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of California. A month later, on June 14th, the Cygnus, named SS Rick Husband after the commander of the ill-fated Columbia flight STS-107, was unberthed from the Navy report on Unity and moved to the release position before being let go by the station's arm. It moved away and performed a deorbit burn, burning up in the atmosphere. On June 18th, Soyuz TMA-19M, with the Expedition 46 crew aboard, undocked from the Rosfiat module, moved away from the station, performed a deorbit burn, and landed safely in Kazakhstan just three hours after undocking. On July 7, 2016, Soyuz MS-01 launched atop a Soyuz FG carrier rocket from Site-15 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome, bound for the ISS. And liftoff of Kate Rubens, Anatoly Venetian, and Takuya Onishi now on their way to the International Space Station. This was the first launch of the updated Soyuz MS, which retains its structural design, but updates several internal components including antenna, thrusters, batteries, radios, rendezvous equipment, and a host of other modern accoutrements. Good first stage performance, Soyuz delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust from its four, four boosters and single engine. The first stage of the Soyuz measured 68 feet in length and 24 feet in length. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Soyuz MS-01 docked to the Rosfiat module without issue. A week later, on July 16, 2016, Progress MS-03 launched atop a Soyuz U-carrier rocket from Site-316 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Progress MS-03 docked with the Nadir docking port of the Pierce module on the 19th of July. T 
While Progress MS-03 was still in its rendezvous orbit, SpaceX began its CRS-9 mission, launching a Dragon cargo vehicle atop a Falcon 9 on July 18th. Lift off of the Falcon 9. Falcon 9 is through the towers. GC boot to section 10.57. Stay secure the pad. Not Come on, pad net A. Following stage separation, the rocket's first stage performed a boost-back maneuver and landed smoothly at Landing Zone 1 at Cape Canaveral. Following the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Dragon arrived at the station was grabbed by the station's arm and berthed to the Nadir port on Harmony. CRS-9 carried 2,257 kilograms of cargo to the International Space Station, and its unpressurized cargo, the International Docking Adapter 2, was located in the Dragon's trunk, and it was attached and connected to PMA-2 during a spacewalk in August of 2016. The first docking using the IDA wouldn't be until March of 2019, with the arrival of Crew Dragon Demo-1. A little over a month after arriving, Dragon was grabbed, unberthed from Harmony, and released. It performed its deorbit burn and landed safely in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of California on August 26th. On September 6, 2016, Soyuz TMA-20M with the Expedition 47 crew aboard undocked from the Poisk module moved away from the station, performed its deorbit burn, and landed on the steps of Kazakhstan three hours later. The next month, on October 17, 2016, Orbital ATK launched their Cygnus craft, named SS Allen Poindexter, atop the Antares 230 from Wallops Island in Virginia. Two. One. And as you can see, Cygnus lifting off on top of its Antares rocket on its mission to deliver supplies and science to the International Space Station. This was the first launch of an Antares since a failure of an Antares 130 in 2014. After nearly a week in orbit, the Cygnus approached the station, was grabbed by the station's arm, and berthed to the Nadir port of Unity. On October 14th, Progress MS-02 undocked from the aft port of the Svezda, moved away from the station, performed its deorbit burn, and burned up over the Pacific Ocean. On October 19, 2016, Soyuz MS-02 launched atop a Soyuz FG carrier rocket from Site-316 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Going up to flight speed and liftoff. Shane Kimbrough, Sergei Rizhikov, and Andrei Borisenko blasting off from Kazakhstan, making their way towards the International Space Station. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Soyuz MS-02 docked with the Poisk module on October 21st, 2016. After a week aboard together, Soyuz MS-01 undocked from the Rosviet module on October 30th with Expedition 48 aboard. It moved away from the station, fired its engines to deorbit, and landed safely in Kazakhstan. Engine. 
On November 17th, 2016, Soyuz MS-03 launched atop a Soyuz FG carrier rocket from Site-15 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Towards flight speed. And liftoff. Peggy Whitson, Oleg Novitsky, and Tomas Pesquet rocketing towards the International Space Station. The rocket lighting up the night sky there in Baikonur. All initial performance calls indicate everything nominal or normal. The first stage delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust through those four boosters in the single core engine. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Soyuz MS-02 docked with the Rosviet module on November 19th, 2016. On November 21st, 2016, the Cygnus SS Allen Poindexter was grabbed by the station's arm, unberthed from Unity, and released. It raised its orbit to release four CubeSats before performing its final deorbit burn and burning up in the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. On December 1st, 2016, Progress MS-04 launched atop a Soyuz U carrier rocket from Site-15 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Engines coming up to turbo speed. All engines at flight speed. And liftoff. We have liftoff of the 65th Progress Resupply Vehicle beginning a two-day journey to the International Space Station. The launch proceeded normally until telemetry was lost at 382.3 seconds about two minutes into the block one stage burn. At that time, progress apparently separated from the third stage, almost six minutes earlier than normal, and a high altitude explosion was reported over the skies of Tuva, and debris from the third stage and progress impacted in mountainous areas approximately 3,500 kilometers downrange from Baikonur. In January of 2017, Roscosmos announced the results of the investigation into the cause of the failure most likely the oxygen pump of the Block I third stage, caught fire and disintegrated, rupturing the oxygen tank. The fire was probably caused by foreign particles in the pump, or potentially an assembly error. The last launch of 2016 occurred on December 9th, when the Japanese resupply vehicle HTV-6 launched atop an H-2B launch vehicle from the Tanegashima Space Center in Japan. The engines igniting, the solid rocket boosters and lift off. The H2B has cleared the tower, the sixth HTV vehicle on its way to the International Space Station. Good first stage performance. Again, those solid rocket boosters will fire for the first 1 minute 54 seconds into launch. The main engines of the first stage will continue to fire for about 3 or about 5 minutes and 47 seconds. Four days after the launch of the HTV-6, it approached the station, was grabbed by the station's arm, and berthed to the Navy report on Harmony ready to offload its nearly 6,000 kilograms of cargo. The operation of the station in 2016 was settling in nicely to routine resupply missions from various partners and crew flights aboard Soyuz vehicles launching from Baikonur.